Hi, my name is Alex Williams. Um, for various reasons, I got into looking at this uh, famous piece of paper here, which is the write-up of the Imperial College uh, model, which more or less has determined the future uh, at the moment of 66 million people in the UK. It's a 20-page document, um, and I have to say, as a physicist, I found it quite confusing. And that confusion led me to looking at very many different data sets in the UK. And I've compiled uh, all of that data and all of those findings uh, in a way that I hope is helpful so that we can get some idea about lockdown or no lockdown as a decision based on some kind of facts. So these are the mysteries that uh, I was aiming to solve when I got into this. Uh, the first one of one is I think we all or many people ask anyway as we see COVID related deaths uh, running at about a thousand deaths a day uh, and at the same time you have underutilized capacity in the intensive care units and nobody in the Nightingale Hospital. So that was the first uh, mystery. I think the second mystery was why it is uh, in the UK that we see quite a lot of deaths to the number of cases for COVID-19 uh, at a ratio of about 12%. And if you look at those famous tables with uh, all other countries on them, you see about 2.5%. And I've heard uh, endless speculation on the TV about why that is. Most of it's completely spurious. So today, if you're going to give me 15, 20 minutes, I will actually give you the definitive answer of why that is. Uh, then the other question a lot of speculation about is why are there so many deaths not related to COVID? And there's some nuances in there as well. But I think, you know, instinctively people understand it's because the uh, NHS to a large extent has been reorganized to accommodate COVID related illnesses only um, at the expense, of course, of other life threatening illnesses that are not being dealt with as, as they should be, so um, we can look into those numbers. And funnily enough, I do think there is a mistake um, in the model. I think even, and I, I can show you which lines those are, and think even if there isn't a mistake in the model, the model, as far as I can see, absolutely pushes um, all assumptions to beyond their boundaries and has created a, I can't really describe it as a scenario, but a picture which isn't realistic and it's not the way scenario planning is meant to be done. There's quite well established guidelines in the UK for epidemics and pandemics and this model does not meet those guidelines and it's created this number of 510,000 dead in an unmitigated pandemic. I don't believe there's any substance to that number. I believe it was a number generated to trigger fear, which it's done. And I want to pick through all of those numbers in the next 15 or 20 minutes. So this is the awful piece of this presentation. Uh, hopefully I can skip through it without making it too painful. But one thing I've realized is as, as I watch the news coverage and the various debates is people are taking numbers and definitions and putting them in Excel and talking about them without necessarily knowing what those things mean and unfortunately in this uh, business of epidemiology there's a lot of terms that are quite complicated and they overlap a fair bit. I'm not going to go through all of these which I'm sure you'd be pleased to know. Uh, I'm just going to go through the sort of basic building blocks and the reason I'm going to do that is because I need them at the end to show where things have gone wrong. So the top one is the uh, infection rate uh, which which is a point of time. There's a point of time test where you look, you look at a population of people, you test for a disease, do they have it, yes or no, which is a PCR test, and that will give you a percentage number. Uh, there's another very similar named uh, ratio, which is, well, it's more or less the same name, but that is not, uh, that, that's a different kind of infection. That's an infection that's happened at any time in the past. And so that will show you people who are infected and have been infected in the past and have antibodies. And that's, that's a very different number. As a, and, and this is the problem you'll see at the end, there's been a mix up in those numbers. But the rule of thumb maybe is that the first number is about 20%, 10% is 
and the second number will be about 80% once this whole thing has run its course, May maybe less. Let's say Imperial College thinks it's going to be 80%. Um, I'm probably not going to say much about the other things, but as you get down the table, there's two sort of rules of thumb that are used quite a lot in the maths of this uh, epidemiology. There's the case fatality ratio, and a case is a person who has uh, the disease and shows symptoms. There's an infection fatality ratio, which is uh, similar, but... There's an infection fatality ratio, which is the number of deaths to the number of people who have been infected. And those, those number of people, they include people that do show symptoms and don't show symptoms. So those are a couple of sort of ratios that you, that you use and you, and you sort of play around with to end up with calculations to give you uh, some of the statistics that, c that come out of this uh, process. So uh, that, that's probably about enough. So what really got me interested in this in a bad way is, again, this number of 510,000. Uh, the reason I got slightly confused by the number is that we have uh, a, a sort of almost perfect data set in the Diamond Princess, which was the uh, ship in, uh, in, in Japan that went off, uh, went off on a cruise. Unfortunately, someone got sick. Uh, and then you see through that whole population who got sick, when they got sick, how many were infected using the, that definition from the previous page how many had symptoms, how many did not have symptoms, and unfortunately, how many of those people died. And that gives you um, a fairly good set of numbers where uh, basically you have the population times 17% were infected there. 50% of that 17% actually had symptoms. And then of those people that had symptoms, 2.6% died. So if you sort of multiply that together, you end up with... 0.2% of the people that were there uh, on the ship from the beginning. And that's that's the kind of rule of thumb number that 99.8% of, uh, of us will not die of COVID, but unfortunately 0.2% of the population will. And I, th I think that's an important thing to think about when we think about the what's being done for the 0.2% and what's being done for the 99.8%. Um, and if you apply those numbers to the UK population, you end up with an expected uh, death toll from this disease of around about 150,000 uh, people, unfortunately. Um, there's another set of numbers, which I can go into a bit later, but you apply those numbers, you end up with 100,000 people dying. And that's the so-called uh, unmitigated epidemic, where you basically don't do anything. You let the disease run its course. Um, and then, of course, you have the famous 510,000. So, you know, we're out by a factor of three and a half or something against the Diamond Princess number. And I think that caused me confusion right from the beginning. I thought, I'm not an ep epidemiologist, but I should be able to multiply three or four numbers together and come up with something that makes sense. And I couldn't, basically. And that was the beginning of a uh, short and intensive journey into the literature of viruses. So before um, getting into any more numbers, I think the big thing that's really bothering me um, and perhaps other people is what are the statistics we're looking at? So we've got the 510,000 pr prediction or scenario, whatever you want to call it, of potential people dying. Then you have a lot of mitigation actions, which we'll go into. And then you have some actual results. So it should be easy to compare the actual results with the predictions and see, you know, are we kind of on track here? Now, unfortunately, the actual results that we're all seeing are generally utterly, utterly meaningless. The number that's coming out of the Office of National Statistics and the number that's coming out of the Department of Health and Social Care mean absolutely nothing, basically. Um, and I'm going to explain why. It starts with how you code a death, basically. Uh, and death is coded uh, through the death certificate in, in, uh, in two ways, essentially. There's section one, which is really the causes of death. Um, and there's a chain of events, and there's quite detailed instructions about how you order that chain of events. 
Uh, and then there's another section, which is section two, which is things that do not contribute directly to death, but they were present at the time. Very big, very big difference. So we'll, we'll get to why that's important in a sec. So I thought yeah, I could see very strange numbers coming out about uh, deaths, basically. And I thought, well, maybe this is something to do with the World Health Organization. And I was absolutely amazed when uh, I saw that the World Health Organization actually makes it very, very clear that when you are uh, looking at a death, if you want to call it a COVID death, it has to be the cause of death, which kind of makes sense. If it's in box number two, i.e. it existed at the time of death, it's not, it's not relevant. You cannot call it a COVID death. Um, so what did our Office of National Statistics do? Um, this is quite a long and difficult table. I'm not going to go into amazing amounts of detail, but uh, if you look in the um, deaths registered column, sort of more or less in the middle, basically, uh, you'll see at the bottom what it actually, what, what we're actually defining and what we're actually looking at is deaths where COVID-19 has been mentioned on the death certificate. Now, I read that to say it can be in part one, i.e. it's relevant, directly relevant to death, or it can be in part two, where it's not the cause of death. But of Office of National Statistics have decided to add those things together, even though they have the data separately, and, and part one would be incredibly useful. They've actually merged them into what is essentially a meaningless number. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but in, in, al along with creating these new statistics around COVID, this is a whole new approach to uh, talking about statistics on death. They've also changed the rules for doctors so that they can place a, 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 a diagnosis of COVID-19 in the event of death, even if there isn't a swab, which I think is incredible uh, in the, of all the, all the uh, viruses and and illnesses out there in the world, um, they're allowed to put in COVID even without any evidence that it is COVID. But that's, we'll come back to that basically.